is a Bramble Jam podcast. Hi, I'm Bran. Just, you know, loving the season finale of When Calls the Heart. Hey, it's Panda. You know, just liking the finale of When Calls the Heart. I'm Dan, and it's Founders Day, baby. <laughs> it's Founders Day. It comes once a season, and it's right now, and I despise When Calls the Heart. And this is the, the Deck, Deck the Hallmark, Hallmark Podcast. Podcast. Founders Day edition. Yeah! Woo! Yeah! <laughs> Founders Day! Founders Day! Founders Day! Founders Day! When I say founder, you say your favorite founder! Founders! George Washington! Founders! Quaker Oats guy! Founders! Founders! William Penn? Quaker Oats guy. Yeah. William Penn. Oh, is that him? That's him. Oh, yeah. that's William great. Penn. He did help found Colony of Pennsylvania. Yeah, You're not no, wrong. I'm really proud of him. Founders Day, y'all. Founders. It's time. Day. <laughs> Very excited about today, guys. You know who my favorite founder is, Brand? Brandon Gray, founder of the Deck the Hallmark podcast. Yeah. <laughs> Tip of the cap. There you go. Hey, all right. Maybe not. Wow. The only thing you need here <laughs> is for those to be cargo shorts. <laughs> No. What in the holy Hades is that supposed to be? I don't. Are, are you trying to skip? Are you doing like triple jump on the Nintendo Power uh, uh, Power Pad? All right, ready? Watch. Is this the supposed? <laughs> Man, if you're not watching on YouTube, you are missing it. Oh my gosh, missing that it that was something. Wind calls Thank the you. heart. <laughs> out of breath, boys. Hot. We're gonna vamp, vamp, vamp right. a little bit. Hey, guys. When I say found, <laughs> founders, uh, Gary Busey. <laughs> I, I panicked. I panicked. Mm. Um, yeah. So, when goes the heart? Season six finale. It seems like just yesterday we used to rock the show. I used to track you, lock the flow, which so is crazy because got to know. right now, as yeah. we record, yeah. Season nine finale is airing. That's right. It's crazy. <laughs> we're we're two, three seasons we've not watched. Wow. What a hole. What a hole. It might be the series finale, according to Hallmark. <laughs> Can you believe that? Did you see that? Did you see this? On, Hall, on All, Hallmark. Like yesterday. On the screen, it said tomorrow night, ser- when calls the heart, series finale instead of season finale. That made the air. And they've not renewed it yet. Maybe they... Do you think they leaked it accidentally? And they just didn't tell anybody's the last. That would be real dumb. Hey, intern Jared. You put yeah, Siri, season, same That's thing, fine. right? I'm from Pip Pip Cheerio from old London Town. <laughs> series. That's what they call it. They call it series a season. Series? series? Is that true? That's it? I don't know. They got the British. They got the British doing the graphic work over at Hallmark Channel. <laughs> we uh got big news earlier this week. We got a Christmas in July movie. Well, that's coming out, premiering yeah. on July 16th. All the McGarry should be happy. So, yeah, that's exactly right. Yes. That's exactly right. Which we're going to get into some serious, serious mm. McGeary uh, <laughs> discussion serious today. Serious McGeary. This got discussion today, am I right, boys? Oh, for yeah. sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Serious. Love Triangle's really starting to take shape here. Uh, but before we get started, it is uh, Thursday, so it is time for me to uh, check in with my good friend Wrigley. Wrigley, how you doing, buddy? Oh, I couldn't be better. Uh, what you been up to this week, bud? Oh, you know, just got uh, finally scored uh, with my with my good buddy, uh, Bab, Bill, down the road. What does that mean, you finally I, Panda's scored? Panda's been asking for the good stuff. I finally got it for him. Took me months. What do you mean? What did you get him? You know. You know. I don't know. I think it speaks for itself. What did you get him? Read a book. You know what I got him. All kinds of stuff. Panda, what did he get you? Echinacea. Yep. Elderberry. Yep. <laughs> Turmeric. Yep. Mixed with the ginger. Ashwagandha. Yep. <laughs> Apple cider. Yep. All mixed together into one super pill. Yep. You know what I call it? What? My pants. <laughs> <laughs> bang, bang, bong, my pants. <laughs> Just over here reeling them in and casting them back. Wow, that was good, buddy. Thank you. Hey, are you excited for Bramble Fest? Oh, I couldn't be more excited. You didn't show up last year. I did year. not. It was in my contract. I got that weekend off. <laughs> Boss Baby Fest. Oh, that's right. And we are talking about Boss Baby Fest again. Wow. Uh, but the momentum is starting to wane. 
a bit after the incident that happened at the Red Roof in Room B last year. We got <laughs> conjoining rooms. Ro room A was off the chain, was for sure off the chain. But in Room B, we had some boss babies there. And it, let's just say it got out of hand. What do you mean you had some boss? Lot, everyone left their baby in Room B, and oh, they were all no. in suits and ties. Yep. It was a mess out there. It was People left their actual problem. babies? Yeah, yeah. It was Boss Baby Fest. They had them in the ties, and they were in Room B. I was told Room B was under control, so we might not have it. Like, who knows? I, I don't know. Was there anyone watching Room B? I, I You know, it's not my department. <laughs> Well, I was here to watch the film Boss Baby and Boss Baby 2. Boss right. Baby Beats Back. I don't know what it's called. It's not important. Wait, so do you guys just watch them on a loop? Yeah. For how long? Yeah, yeah. You got to to get the nuance. I mean, it's kind of like, you know, what the postables say about signs he'll deliver. Yeah. You got to watch Boss Baby, I don't know, three, four dozen times before you really start to understand the nuances and the symbolism of what that baby, who is a boss, I might add, <laughs> is going through. So if I... If I gather this correctly, <laughs> you, Boss yeah. Baby yeah. is a movie about a baby. Yeah, but he's got a cell phone. He's got a suit and tie. He's got a little suit. Is he's he a, running things. Is he a spy? Oh, uh, I think he just runs a big time corporation, like a Fortune 500. Panda? Yeah, that's all true. Okay. Uh, he does not run a Fortune 500. Is, he just comes down is he a spy? Uh, from the heavens. Uh, and from the store, what? from the heavens, from the heavens. He, yeah, from the, the store what drops him off and then about? he actually runs like the family. But then in the TV show, he, there's is a like, TV show. Yeah. No, uh, he's there's a not a TV there, yeah, show. Netflix or I think it's on Netflix. There's a boss. Rick? Yeah. I mean, there might be, I'm, I'm a purist. I just do the film. <laughs> oh, you're missing out because you the think TV the TV show, show is, is lesser. I do think it's less. Of yeah, let me see where you can find it. Hold on, Boss Baby TV show. <laughs> this is good stuff here. Hold on. I'll allow it. Yeah, there's four seasons of it. Uh, four seasons of Boss Baby the TV on show? Netflix. Yeah, the Boss Baby back in business. <laughs> this is why this is why Netflix is going down. I yeah. swear yeah, 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 on yeah, yeah, all yeah. things, if Boss Baby is the reason Netflix has to start doing commercials, so help me, I'll cancel. So help me, I'll cancel. That'll be the straw that breaks the camel's back. Cancel Boss Baby the series no, I and don't. leave out the ads. You see, here's my thing. I And this is my problem. I emailed Netflix and I said, do not cancel Boss Baby. I would <laughs> gladly watch commercials in order to make sure. And they were like, I, literally, I would watch it. I would have those episodes extended to an hour long each with commercials just to get my Boss Baby fix. I love it. It's great. <laughs> so uh, when will you know about Boss Baby Fest, Ring? Uh, I'm going to go ahead and say I won't be at Bramble Fest. Okay. <laughs> you know, but we moved it up like a month. Yep. 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 We moved Boss Baby Fest as well. Why? So I wouldn't have to go to Bramble Fest. Okay. <laughs> I really love the people out there. I just it don't doesn't like feel you. like it. Yeah. I, I get the feeling you do not. <laughs> Wing so Calls the Heart Season 6, Episode 9. The title is? You betcha. <laughs> Uh, Founders Day, y'all. Mm. Um, two of Hearts. The mm. two of Hearts. Everybody, Whatever, man, show sure stupid. <laughs> and it went a little something like this. Uh, Elizabeth is back, baby, and she's safe in her house. And uh, until that tornado of a half of of, of a sister uh, comes on in, all right, boys. <laughs> tornado <laughs> and a half <laughs> of a sister. <laughs> no, sorry. So is a tornado <laughs> and a half? Is it like the bottom or top half, Brand, or is it split like vertically? Vertical split. Sambla. Uh Julie's back. They opened for Vertical say. Horizon. It was crazy. It's <laughs> vertical yeah. tour. <laughs> all vertical all the time. Yeah, vertical split. Yeah, and Vertical Horizon. Man, what a combo that would oh be. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Try and stop it. <laughs> um, the town is hard at work preparing for Founders Day. And boy, is it yeah! a lot. Boy, is it a lot. Founders S Day, baby! Are you bringing the cider? We got, we got a peg to do this year? Bill, you going to eat that pie? <laughs> it's all too much to handle, everybody. <laughs> it's also christening day. And Nathan shows up with a wood thing that he made. Uh, and he carved uh, an image. Uh, uh, he called an again. There you go. Carved an Emerson quote onto the wood. Uh, it's for the library and for her heart. Uh, it's, good. it's good use of camera there. <laughs> it's good use of one right there. 
Uh, yeah, put that in the deckies. Best user camera one. That's got to be a decky, right? Uh, she goes to bring it to the library, and Lucas is there. And she's like, can you do me, do me a quick solid and never do that whole thing again to me with a bad guy and the guns? Okay, thanks. Bye. Um, Lee gives Jesse the face of promotion. Uh, the christening happens. Nathan holds uh, little Jack, and Elizabeth looks on as uh, Nathan is kind of like, and she's like, okay. Um, for those of you at home uh, listening, that was uh, Nathan bouncing with the baby. And, uh, um, it's time for the grand opening of the library. And Elizabeth and Lucas do uh, do that thing. And Allie's excited to show Nathan the shelves that she built. He is less than excited. <laughs> Um, and uh, speaking of not being excited, we then see uh, um, uh, Lucas, who's just kind of there this episode and is, seems to be in for Founder's Day as much as he possibly can be. Um, Elizabeth uh, it has a little baby Jack, and uh, it's time for the Founder's Day Festival. And Lucas uh, wins a little, uh, little Jack a bear. Wowza. Things are heating up. <laughs> Then, Wowza, he said. then Lucas and Nathan compete uh, to see who can hit the bell thing uh, with the hammer thing. And uh, the goal there is to impress Elizabeth. They take off their jackets, so you know they mean business. <laughs> um, but neither can do do that because it's hard. Except is How it? How is this getting this much of the synopsis? <laughs> because Carson comes in and is like, no problem here, everybody. I can uh, kill people. And hit bells. So uh, Bill uh, found a letter uh, that proved that Henry suspected that the mine was dangerous way back when, before season one ever began. And asked for an investigation. His higher ups said, "You got nothing to worry about over there, pal. Uh, yeah, have a good have a good day, huh?" Those are his higher ups. Good. good um, so I guess that proves that Gowan. Uh, I guess you could say he's misunderstood. Am I right, boys? Yeah, yeah. for sure. Um, Elizabeth finds him and tells him, "You're not the man that you're not the man that people think you are." And um, he it, it seems not, it, like that's a nice thing. So it's the Founders' Day dance. Jesse the face is now going to be Jesse the fiance. Oh man, how long did it take you to come up with that zinger? Not even in the notes. Came no way. Right freaking no, now. I don't believe it. That's a, dude. When I said you were one of the best founders, I was maybe giving you a little bit, but after that, dude, you are. <laughs> You've never been older. You've never been older <laughs> in your life than doing that dance. Never. It's fantastic. Thirty flirty and dancing. Um, so they do a ladies' choice dance, and Elizabeth says, uh, ask Lucas if he wants to dance. And uh, she said, and he's like, yeah, okay. And they're dancing, and uh, Nathan <coughs> is looking, looking in the distance, looking, looking at him. And uh, they lock eyes, and he looks like he just got shot. He is so sad, and she's like, whoa. Maybe there's something there, huh? And that, my friends, was When Man Calls the Heart Season you 6. Us. Two of hearts. Season 6, straight up. Straight up. Wow. All in, all done. Let's take a quick break. We'll be right back here on Take, take the, the Hallmark. Hallmark. What if I told you boys that I'm not even halfway done with this blue slurp? That is unbelievable. <laughs> I feel like I bought that for you yesterday. Yeah. Just still. remember when I almost suggested getting him a big dog. Big yeah, he blue was like, slurp. Does he want one of those? Do you want a big S? <laughs> I was like, he'll never finish it. Uh, I'd be slurping that until next Sunday. That's right. Yeah, that's what big S stands for. Big slurp. Big slurp. That's, <laughs> that's exactly right. right. Mm. Uh, hey, guys, let's break this episode down. It's an uh, episode and in, in put a bow on the season. Oh, man. Yeah. Could if we? you will. Uh, Panda. Well, we crowned the best season five episodes ago. Panda. Yeah. What do you think about this episode? And then put a little bow on it. Yeah. So, you know, I think it's an odd choice to do a Founders Day as the conclusion and have nothing happen, which mm. is a little um, surprising for me. Uh, I would have thought that last episode might have been maybe a better option for a 
bulk of finale. This felt almost more like a filler, uh, which is strange. But that said, uh, when you're at the top of your game, you can do whatever you want, which is what one calls the hardest doing. They're Nine at the top of the yep. in this season. In the first three or four, you pretty much said the train was rolling. It's amazing. For the last four or five, I've said that it's, it's been not bad. moving as no. I, I you never have said, said it's not been as good as the earlier stuff. Right, sure, fair. Uh, so but at what I point would, is it no longer just not? I would say I would say this is the the second best season. Season one's the best. Season one's the best. Okay. Uh, so now this, we're talking. So I would say this is the second best season. Uh, it is not the strongest episode. Um, it is, uh, truth be told, kind of a dull episode. Uh, what? And Founders you know, Get man, listen. I just think that uh, this was. Uh, I, let's just summarize this season. I think it is a remarkable feat what they did to put together as good a season as they did with losing uh, Lori Lachlan's character and losing, you know, main characters. I, I think they put it together overall. You know, this episode wasn't the strongest, but overall, hey, good season. Uh, they ended with the little stinger of maybe there's some love triangle brewing, which we knew, obviously, but uh, it's it's solid. Here's I'm what here I would for say. It. Here's what I'd be willing to say, even though this show's what you, terrible and should what you just die of slow death. Three episodes into this season, before they had to shut it down, mm -hmm. it was on pace to being a markedly better program. Yes. And then, unfortunately, when we come back and they had to retool everything, it became standard bad win calls the heart. Right. And that's unfortunate. And so you give them props for not dipping in quality, but simultaneously the first three episodes of this season, while still bad, were on its way to being a markedly improved program. And then all of a sudden they had to retool everything. And then it just went back down in the doldrums. Yep. Well, I wouldn't say the doldrums. I'm not that negative on it, but yeah, I, yeah. I think they did. I, I think that this season, in some ways, did you remember is, when James Brolin gets off the the carriage though, end of season one? Oh man, the, he's the, the judge in town, and you're like, this is we're this is big doings. Yes, it's gonna be a trial. It's gonna be awesome. Gowan's a murderer. Things were better. Season back one, then. yeah, I'm telling you, Things season one's better. the best season. Jack season and one. Elizabeth. Season I one. Mean, was I mean, I long best. for those days, and I hate this program. Season one was the best season, but this is, I, I still think this is the second best uh, season of television we've got now when close to heart. Go ahead. Bray. Well, I don't think it's any uh, uh, coincidence that this episode uh, seems slow for me, <laughs> namely uh, light on the alley, uh, <laughs> light on the alley. The episodes that have worked for brand heavy on the alley. Mm -hmm. Um, I, I, I want to know what the Hardys out there felt watching this. After five seasons of investing into the romance of Jack and Elizabeth, and we get nine episodes, eight episodes to kind of mourn, and then we're forced to watch her do a lady's choice dance with Lucas and make eyes with Nathan from across the room. It was offensive to Jack. Yes. Wrong. Yeah. They should not have done that. It was too soon. She didn't need to be dancing with anyone or making eyes with anyone for this season. Just let it happen. Let the, the characters develop. Let us get to know Lucas and Nathan. What happened in this episode was a travesty to the relationship the, that we fell in love with for five seasons, and he was gone too soon. <laughs> R.I.P. But I will say, and I am excited to begin diving into this conversation because I find myself flip-flopping. Flip-flopping. Between Lucas and Nathan. They, they, then that's where they want you. And I am fully flopped this week. Back to back to Lucas. Back to Lucas. Really? Yeah. I am not. That is not just crazy way. town. That is absurd, dude. Absurd. Why? Well, because, first of all, well, we'll Nathan still, like, what he did took a lot more effort than just throwing money at things and, like, actually building or something. But I need I remind you that in the last episode... Elizabeth was almost killed. I don't know if you remember that or not. Um, and you said like no one asked 
church and walk in. In the last episode, Bran, you specifically said, how can she ever get past this about what Lucas did did to her? And then there was a commenter on YouTube who left us a full dissertation on how this is Elizabeth's fault. She shouldn't have walked in right. there. Yeah. She blah, blah, blah. And clearly you've read that and taken it to heart <laughs> yeah. and changed your mind completely. An excellent point. What would I, what I would say point. to that commenter is, is that Elizabeth should be able to walk into a place of business from someone that knows her without fear for her life. It was closed. You really are arguing the opposite it point? Was You're going to do this? Listen, you're arguing the opposite point of last week. Brian, last week you were the one that said... Lucas, you can't get past this. Lucas put her in harm's way. And this week you're saying that it's Elizabeth's fault. I just want to make sure we're clear no, on that. No, no, You've also no. flopped on that as well. I'm not saying that it's You're a li- flopper. You're, <laughs> listen, a, listen, you're a big time flopper boy. I'm on pain meds and I even know that that's a stupid take. You're a big time flopper boy. <laughs> this is all I'm going to say. That's a dumb take. Brand. Big time flopper Brand, boy. I thought we were I, friends, I, I, just, I don't no, like I thought we flopper were friends. Boys. Flip, flop, flopper boy. Flip, flip flop, flopper, flopper boy. boy. Flip. Flop, flopper boy. Flip, flop, flopper boy. Flip, flop, flopper boy. Big flopper boy. Flip, flop, flopper boy. Flip, flop, flopper boy. You big flopper boy. That's what you are. Big belly flopper boy. <laughs> Wait, one more too long, but I loved it. Um, I just didn't like. They're making. They're making. No, this is the thing. I like Nathan, but they made Nathan look like a little sad little puppy in this episode. They did. He's not they a did. sad little puppy. He's not a sad little puppy. No, he's, not. he's not a sad little puppy. Yeah. I don't want to say I want her to end up with another sallow puppy. I would rather watch Lucas. I'm still team Nathan as far as who Elizabeth should end up with for what that's worth. Um, I have a lot of anger in this episode too, Bran. It has nothing to do with that though. Okay. There are shows that write, you know, the best television shows write the story and wherever the story leads, they follow those strings out. There are bad shows that just scrap things and rewrite and the worst shows are the ones that completely make the audience feel stupid for even caring in the first place. When Calls the Heart is that show, because I am telling you right now, what they decided to do in what amounts to be probably the 60th episode or more of this program is, is to tell you everything you knew about Henry Gowan was wrong for the last 60 episodes. Of course that, you're stuck on Gowan. That is insulting to any sort of viewer with any intelligence. It's insulting to the writing staff and the creators of the show. And it's insulting to the poor guy playing Gowan, whom I can't remember his name right now. Who is Mark Twain. No, it's Martin Cummins is is his name. Martin Cummins is a great actor, professional, who's trying to create a, a, a morally ambiguous character that is slimy and you don't want to like even when it seems like he does the right thing. And with a stroke of a pen, you made a complete mess of the best part of your television show. You have no business writing or creating this show. This was the one interesting thing. The guy that looked and stared in people's faces as he killed their husbands all for profit now is completely off the hook just so you can write a redemption arc that fits some sort of weird meta American Christian narrative is absurd and it's BS and you should be ashamed of yourself. Worst episode, worst TV show, period. End of discussion. Back to you, Bran. Flip, flop, flip, flop, 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 flip, flop, 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 flopper boy. Oh, oh. <laughs> flip, flop, flopper boy. He's a flip, flip flop, flop, flopper boy. boy. Henry Gowan, he's a flip <laughs> flopper, not me. <laughs> um, well, okay. Let's get to the, all the feels. Panda? Uh, hey, that dance at the very end is uh, a little bit of steam coming off that slow dance. Yeah, liked it. Were you uh, a DJ just now? <laughs> We're gonna slow yeah, things down. They a said bit. they made uh, Nathan look on like a sad puppy. Well, you know what? Maybe when you have somebody cut in on your dance, you would look sad too. I also like the scene where they're all trying to hit the bell. He didn't cut. No one cut in on his. What are you talking about? He just, she chose Lucas. It was right. Lady's it choice. He couldn't find. I think they tried to make it to where Nathan was not visible. Oh, and then the weirdest part to me, which is a, I don't have many wait what's for this episode because nothing happens. But Nathan is walking around like no woman will dance with him. Right. He's the, he's a hot Mountie. He's the Mountie in town. He's Kevin yeah. McGarry. That was my and he's big- like man. Lady's choice. I guess the ladies didn't choose this guy. All right. No. Okay. I, Somebody chose Jesse the face. Okay. 
Not that he's not attractive, but Kevin McGarry's getting chosen in ladies' have choice. You seen, have you, you seen, seen that was my philosophy too when I went to all the homeschool dances and it never worked out. It was really weird. Have you seen Jesse the face's uh, IMDb photo? No, I've not. Does looked. he look like oh, the good, face? Good lord. Good looking well, he's dude. a good looking dude. Really? Well, yeah. They got him looking they got him looking like a face. I almost just Carter. typed in IMDb Jesse the face. <laughs> <laughs> I want to know. <laughs> I can't even type that in an IDB and nothing shows up. It's crazy. Why wouldn't it show up? It's Jesse the face. It's Jesse the face. Um, yeah, I guess my feels. I found. I thought the the th- the he looks the, like a serial killer in this. Yeah, he looks. He does look guy. good though. He does look good. No oh doubt about gosh. it. Yeah, that is a good looking wow. man. That's not just a face. That is not just a face. Just, no, that's his face. That's a face and hair. That's Aaron mm-hmm. Buckholtz. Everybody, Aaron, Aaron Buckholtz. What? Buckholtz. Buck Holtz. Buck Holtz. Yeah, how many times My do you say My Buck, Buck Holt. How are you? Hey, Buck, how you doing? Oh, I'm hot diggity dog. How are you? What's your point? Why are you here? Yeah. What well, was the- you said my name, Buck Holt. <laughs> <laughs> and so I just assumed that you would like to talk to me. I'll allow it. You got anything on your mind, Buck? Yeah, I got a couple things on my mind. First of all, how come I never win the Monopoly game when I am playing McDonald's Peel and Stick? I have peeled and I've stuck and I've never won a cruise. That's number one. Number two, how come number we really one. moved away from those tiny little DVDs? Those were state of the art. Where are the ton of discs? You just don't see them anymore. They save me a lot of space. And third and finally, I just would number like to two. know how come, how come numbers always are going up, but you don't see as many of them going down. They just keep going and going. And then you hit negative numbers, but those aren't What's the same. What's the deal with numbers? That's all I got. Buck Holtz but, out. Listen, <laughs> I don't want to trample over Buck Holtz because I think he's a gym. But who did he hire to be the guy? I don't know. Who's doing <laughs> he the was music on the, and he, talking in the background. He was on the line. Because with that him. guy, what's he doing? <laughs> <laughs> Buck, he, who is that guy? Buck, oh, who, that's my best friend. Hate me. <laughs> you, no. guys, you guys like it? Did you like it? It was great, man. Thank you. What's your name? Simon. Simon? Yes. Last name? Hi. Simon Hi. I'm nervous. It's not I. I'm nervous. <laughs> it's Jamashkawa. <laughs> it's Jamashkawa. Jamashkawa. That's my fault. Hi. <laughs> Jamashkawa. Right. Simon, I'm real proud of you, buddy. You did God a great bless. job. Yep. Do, do, do. <laughs> God bless. Um, let's take a break. Okay. Did you have a feels? No, God, no. Uh, (laughs) Be better. We're back. Mm. (laughs) Mm. Yeah, we are. It's getting real. That just hits it right. Mm. Mm. Feels right. Hello, everybody. Welcome back. We're talking about the Wait What's here on Wind Calls the Heart Season 6, Episode 9, Season Finale. Panda, what you got? Oh, I got a bunch of things, Brand. Whoa. Uh, Coming on in. Hot. Yeah. Uh, first of all, uh, my thing is, I know we've said this before. She could not have picked a worse set of godparents, her sister and then Bill. Yeah. Those- it, knowing that knowing that her sister's the last piece of that equation of the godparents well, is just, just sad. And I do want to be very clear. Um, they had to rewrite all of Bill this season. And it is so evident because this is one of my wait what's. In this episode of Wind Calls the Heart, Bill is a godparent and is debating over whether or not to be a judge in the pie competition. Yeah. Those are his big things he's got to do. They don't know what to do with Bill. Mm-hmm. Have no idea. All that Bill Abigail stuff. Yep. Gone out the window. Gone. They got to start from scratch. All the things that they were going to do. Yeah. All the things, things they, they were going to say. say. Bill and Abigail are gone. Gone out, out, out the, the window. window. Uh, uh, Sugar Ray, baby. Yeah. Um, <laughs> who's doing the christening? This is the most random moment to just punctuate in It's weird that religion. they're all not Baptist, right? It's weird. Or Methodist. They're, no, no, they're not Baptist. Baptist would not do a christening. <laughs> Right, but I, it, it makes sense that they're, they're that they would be under like a Methodist. Yeah, me- yeah, you could do out a, west. Yeah, yeah that North, would make Northwest. Sense. Yeah, yeah, 
So, but yeah, no, it's weird. It's weird to me that all of a sudden they have not mentioned this priest. The priest comes out of nowhere for the christening. I just he's a traveling, traveling uh, Christmas. It makes me sad we don't have the priest. Yeah, Where's you Frank keep, at when you need him. Where's Frank at? Where's Frank at this when you need him? This would be the perfect time for Frank to show back up. Uh, and then uh, my final wait, what is uh, the fact that they are trying to essentially reverse the amnesia that they've had for the past several seasons about how terrible uh, Gowan was. And now they're trying to essentially rewrite the story to make him more palatable. Dude. And the thing is like, A, it seems late in the game to try to pull this off. Listen. To and second of all, it's the stupidest way you could have possibly done it. I don't know. I don't I don't know. I, I don't all know. I know is this. Here's what I do know is that in the first season, they specifically hide documents that say that he knows the mine is faulty. Yep. And refuses to shut down. And in this season, they have a letter that says he wrote and said, I, the mine's faulty. Do something about it. And they said, no, it's not. And he didn't. I, that is, they basically are just saying, don't watch any previous episode. You're a dummy, dumb, dumb, dumb. Just watch the one in front of your face and like it. Yep. It's it, awful. It, that is not, that is the more frustrating thing. Gosh, like, just, it's bad. Like that, it, I get what they're trying to do, but it's like so bad. It, it, it is not great. It's as infuriated as I've ever been watching Wind Calls the Heart. Yeah, I, I was angry. I, I was real, real angry. It's always you and Gowan. It's always about Gowan. I love yeah. Gowan. He's the one like, and I love Allie. Okay, but no one. Okay, all right. It is sad that we haven't seen Allie. That kid has locked the my chops. heart in the grips of joy. <laughs> You said it, buddy. Uh, they mentioned, they're talking to, to Fiona, and they mentioned Kevin the blacksmith. Mm -hmm. We met Kevin. I don't think we Is this met a Kevin. setup? Like, are we going to meet Kevin next season? Uh, whatever. You can't just throw in a name like Kevin the blacksmith you know, in this show and now, expect me not to notice. Is, they'll add Kevin the blacksmith, and it'll be their first African-American character. <laughs> <laughs> they'll do it. I wouldn't put it past them. They're that stupid. Yeah. <laughs> That's stupid. I love that at the christening, they were like, oh, what do we do? How do we uh, spice this place up a little bit? So they just threw a little lace on the blackboard behind them. <laughs> <laughs> that'll that'll it's show everybody. It's, it's a christening. It's like a little like, white, white lace. Um, I don't know. I guess this is uh, would be true of the time, but this is a tiny library. I'm surprised that they have like sections at all in general, but also surprised that they have a entire section in this tiny library for cowboys. I know that cowboys were hot stuff. They, I, I'm just telling you right now, the fact that there's a cowboy. Bill says, they're a cowboy section. <laughs> like, they're a cowboy section. That's what he does. And then I thought he was See, a Nick bitch. Cage? It was a classic bit where Bill was just going to say something stupid. And then Aaron Krako's like, <laughs> Yeah, it's, yeah right, it's right over there. Right over there. <laughs> it's like, this is like the smallest library in the world. And, but they, someone went to bat for the cowboy section. <laughs> Guys, one of the must-haves. If you don't say cowboys, so help me, I will light it on fire. I will light <laughs> the library right. on fire. It's not happening without a cowboy section, exactly believe right. you me. Hey, do you have any autobiographies of just... Get bent! <laughs> cowboy section! Over there! Uh, uh, I'm looking for the uh, historical nonfiction. What do you think? Cowboy section. Oh, someone there. said Kevin the blacksmith was at the dance coming uh, scene talking to Nathan at the dance. And dancing, and dancing with, with Fiona. Fiona. Okay. Oh. I'll have to go back and take it out. I'm Is there more, now. Kevin? Do we get to see more, Kevin? Kevin the blacksmith? Kevin! Can you do? <laughs> Mom. Dad. Like a horn. It's like a foghorn. Fiona. <laughs> Uh, Dano? Well, I, you you guys together combined to take most of mine. The only one I have left is, is that we end with what amounts to be a gigantic crime taking place in the saloon. And then the next day they have a dance in there and we just never mention it again. And I like there has to be some sort of fallout to this, right? Like questioning, investigation, seeing if Lucas should still be able to keep his bar open, arresting these guys and putting them in jail. There is nothing. We just jump into Founder Day, Founders Day prep. Like, we don't even mention it again. And forget the fish money. That's long gone. But this happened last episode. Guns were pointed at people's temples. How have we not mentioned this again? There How might, have we not been brought up? There to might, be fair, 
to be fair, the whole town was murdered at the beginning of season one. And but we, we have like a funeral, it. and we have like a they burn the church down. There's at least a proportion though, though proportional. It's not so, big deal. but proportional. There should be something here. There's nothing. Not even mention. There's nothing. They talked it out the night before. They shook hands and they said, "Oh, it won't happen again." Well, also like Jack died less than a year ago, and Elizabeth yeah, Elizabeth's was already was moving on, making so. eyes at one, dancing with the other. Exactly. Yeah. How Whatever. how long? I mean, how long do you give them though? Like when's it when's it appropriate to start? You know, life eyes. expectancy way different 100 years I mean, oh, spanish flu is about to hit the, but listen we're not we're not a, a year removed but i think i think you can Get, start making eyes earlier i Really? That's the homeschool in you. So you're, you're, let's, I just want to go ahead and get this on the record. Your wife passes away. No, 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 no. You have a it's youngster. Different. It is different. And here's why it's different. They weren't, I, I, I'm in, like, so I, <laughs> listen, we've been married 11 years. Uh, <laughs> and we dated for a few years before that. So it's, you know, Jack. So and you Elizabeth, think because Jack and Elizabeth Jack weren't Elizabeth married very long, married very long because no, he died at know. combat. Yeah. No, that's in combat and no. at com Hey, I'm going to go to combat. <laughs> but I'm gonna be right. I'll be back. Also, you want anything from combat? I'm, I'm good. Yeah. Okay, you just so, so earlier in the 1900s, I think maybe things were a little different back then. Kevin I would never, per I would never presume that you <laughs> could not make guys this is highly inappropriate for elizabeth to me making eyes <laughs> that's right. at somebody this that's is a right. whirlwind guys kevin disappears between season seven and season eight this is just too much for me to know, handle i didn't even know he existed before then so i think he literally else. only exists today in this season in this episode that's, right. that's it wow and then he'll be here for the next season and then he's gone again Damn. just like he came he, he went you know what i mean just like he came, he went. So um, it's time for the what's called my... Nope. Nope. It's time for Hopes and Valleys. Hopes and yep. Valleys, yep. which Tana. is an important part of this program. You high or you low? Oh, I'm very high on this. I think it's it's real real big goings moving forward. Uh, you got the love triangle coming up, uh, which is exciting. More alley, which is also exciting. Uh, I think they're going to bring in some more oil. We're finally putting the past behind with Gowan. Uh, bring the oil in. Bring it on in. <laughs> bring in more oil. Uh, I just I just think that we should all like. I think it's all rise. All rise all the time moving forward. Uh, I have high expectations moving into season seven that it will be a solid season. Excited about it. All I'm going to say is this, everybody. If I was this high on a season that had to be rewritten because of the, you know, rowing and <laughs> um, <laughs> then, then imagine how great next season is going to be when they have the full a full a season to just write. I think right it's gonna be a special that. season. I think it's gonna be a season we remember our whole lives. That's not good, right, buddy. Damn. Stupid. Um, yeah, it's all valley now. Everything's ruined. Bill <laughs> Avery's just turning down pie competitions. Gowan's just a good guy. That's another way. What? Why did why did Bill oh, yeah. not well, I mean I why was it. Bill not into pie? But he's very skeptical. He needs more info. <laughs> you want me to do what? I'm confused. And they I sell mean, them on a rhubarb. Who's baking these pies? They sell them on a rhubarb. What are the flavors that we have to... Man, I don't know. I just don't know. Bill, someone's I don't making know. you food. You don't turn it down, Bill. Good gracious, man. Yeah, no one. It's ridiculous. Now that Abigail's gone. Mm. The rowing is. It's time for the What's Call My Heart. It is. Email us. Hello, Hello to Hallmark. Hallmark. Com. Tell us what's calling your heart. We'll read it on the air. This is from Marin Hogue. Marin. Woo! Long time double decker, Marin. Mm -hmm. You told her to wander the streets <laughs> at, uh, of Portland. I say one at thing night. one time. Um, as dating advice, that you can go take that to the tape. If you can find that tape, good bless, God bless you. Good bless you, too. Uh, <laughs> hi, Bran, Panda, and Dan. I want to tell you about three amazing people that are calling my heart. It's not us, either, if you can believe it. Well, I know people continuously talk about the DTH Facebook group and how amazing it is, but these three people have really been there for me the last few weeks. Thank I you, recently Mary. lost my job, oh. moved to a new city, went through a breakup, and am starting over, but these three double-deckers have been there for me, and I couldn't have made it to the other side without them. I want you guys to know 
how having this Facebook group expands beyond the pages of Facebook and how you're connecting people in a time when things are so uncertain. This is going to be, I can, I've not read all this, but I can already tell this is going to be really moving and I just can't believe it. Every time something like this happens, we had a group of our double deckers just meet up uh, today, in fact, just to hang out. Mm -hmm. And it just gives me mm -hmm. chills. It just makes me so happy that, that, that this happens. You I never just, get chills either. I don't, I don't, I don't. Not since, uh, not since I watched I Boss Baby. Took, I even rig. took a feather yeah. one time, just ran down your back. Nothing. No, nothing. I did punch you. But yeah. It was, it was different. Got that clip? <laughs> no, <laughs> no, we don't. Uh, a year ago, I slid, yes, I really did that, into Aaron Shea's DMs on Instagram. We were one of the OG deckies. True. And I felt a lot of the comments she was making in the group I related to, and I wanted to be friends with her to my surprise we've come to learn that we are similar in a lot of ways and have a lot in common aaron has heard me ramble about my day and has been one to comfort me through this roller coaster of the last few months i am grateful for our newfound friendship and truly value the lessons she's taught me this last year this is unbelievable then due to your 24-hour marathon I had the opportunity to connect with both shannon dubos and corin bauer on the streets of Portland. I was traveling to Denver for a family <laughs> wedding, but had the immense pleasure of meeting Shannon in person. Little did I know our paths would become very similar. We'd lose our jobs almost the same time and gain new ones. However, we have been there for each other to lift each other up and vent to each other about when our stresses That's got awesome. the better of us. Then I recently moved to Seattle and connected with Corinne Bauer. She invited me to a self-defense class, which Whoa. was very much outside my comfort zone, but she was willing to continue a new connection by going on a few walks and introducing me to a new city and welcoming awesome. a new friend. Walks! <laughs> Not in the middle of the night. These people would have never entered my life if it weren't for the Deck the Hallmark Facebook group, wow. and I wouldn't feel a sense of community without them. My gosh, this That's is great. That's so amazing. So I want to personally thank Aaron Shea, Shannon Dubose, and Corin Bauer, for being there for me and also encouraging each other uh, and also to encourage other listeners uh, to reach out to people you feel a connection with uh, because you never know what the outcome could be. The Double Decker community is truly special and I'm forever grateful that I found you guys back in 2018. Wow. Excited to see what's to come. Love your Double Decker, Marin Hogue, P.S., Special shout out to Cynthia Childers who reached out recognizing I was, gonna be us that time. I was not as active as I used to be, but I met at a live show and wanted to make sure things were going well. Hope to see another live show, Bramble Fest, maybe soon, Marin Hogue. I mean, are you kidding me? Is well, there another I mean, PPS? Is there another line about like... Uh, another PPS? Maybe for a couple maybe of like three like, boys? No, it's weird. These emails don't have to be about us, guys. Um, but she did mention Bramble Fest, which... There are, you know, we opened up tickets last week. Tickets is deck to hallmark.com slash fest. And we're going to have Andrew Walker. We're going to yep. have Nikki Deloach. We're going to have some other surprise guests uh, that are going to be a ton of fun. You're going to want to get those tickets because they're going and they're moving fast. They're moving fast. And you can they're get moving faster tickets. than Rig Dilby moves elderberry. Oh, boy. I move some berry. <laughs> I know you do. Believe you me. That's the good stuff. You ever had the powder? The powder. You snort your elderberry powder. Do a few <laughs> bumps. Do a few bumps of that. Your immune system's like Jean Claude Van Damme. <laughs> Is he dead? Kicking A and taking names. Yeah. Jean Claude will never die. You know why? why? He snorts the berry. <laughs> just hit. Just right off your knuckle. It's a big knuckler. Just a, a quick, quick haunch. <laughs> he tried to say a quick haunch. I don't know why. That's a word to use. Uh, we'll be back tomorrow with Signs Hill Delivered. Take me to higher ground. Take me to higher ground. Take me to higher ground. Merry Christmas. Deck the Hallmarks of Bramble Jam podcast. It's presented by Philo TV. It's produced by Brandon Gray and recorded live in, yeah, that Greenville, South Carolina. Set decor is by Plum at Haywood Mall. For more information on Deck the Hallmark, you can go to deckthehallmark.com. For more information on Bramble Jam podcast network, you can go to bramblejampodcast.com.